Hi there, so my name's Lee, just giving you an update from the agent engagement meeting that we had on the 2nd of July. Um, massive apologies because, um, as I understand, my um, bandwidth was rubbish, so some people struggled to hear. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update of what um, I actually shared of what the HBA is working on over the next few weeks. So Juliet um, outlined kind of what we've been working on, reflecting on um, the things that we've been um, championing on behalf of the uh, membership, whether agency and venues, but also um, our lobby lettering continues to the government. So the lobby letter that we issued on the 30th of June has um, six key areas of focus, one being the furlough extension, which hasn't changed throughout this. Um, that's something that we've continued to lobby throughout all of our letters. Providing further PAYE um, extensions and payment holidays as well, um, immediately making it clear to local authorities um, that the retail, leisure and hospitality grant is available to our sector, which is absolutely key. Um, I'm just reading the notes from here, but to press with MHCLG to provide specific guidelines um, to local authorities, which recognises suppliers in our sector being eligible for rate relief. Um, one thing that we're really keen to continue banging the drum about is the reduction of VAT on services related to, um, and products related to the hotels, agencies, venues. That's really, really critical for us and what we're lobbying is to at least spring 2021. Um, and also to allow venues um, and hotels to reopen safely for business events and meetings. As we know, there are certain sectors reopening now. Obviously, the hotels opened for accommodation last weekend, but we really need a start date for meetings and events, hence why we've included that within the lobby letter. So what else we're working on? Again, just looking at my notes. So we're driving further support for the industry. So we're looking at the toolkits for the agencies. So from a terms of business framework, which um, I discussed um, a couple of agency engagement meetings ago, um, we are just reviewing survey results from um, where we went out to a few agents, just looking at what that framework should look like in terms of working with venues, so we'll be sharing more of that very soon. Educating corporates in terms of digital education, there seems to be some confusion with some corporates with regards to um, virtual events versus virtual meetings, what that means and what the difference is, what you can get more out of from virtual meetings rather than having shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder meetings. Obviously, we all know that none of this will replace live events and how we can educate the corporates is incredibly important for us to be able to kickstart the use of um, meetings and events moving forward. So we're working um, to come out in the next couple of weeks with regards to that. Um, highlighting the potential risks of virtual events as well. There are risks and obviously what we're trying to do is just to outline what that looks like and giving people um, a real clear guidelines of when to use virtual meetings, when hybrid is required or where you could get the most out of it. And obviously for all of um, the agencies that are adapting their propositions at the moment, including virtual, this is really key for us to be able to showcase and to be able to provide further toolkits. Um, we issued a survey to members, uh, venue members, um, and that closes today, which is the 7th of July. Um, and we had a, a venue engagement meeting last week where we had over 88 venues. And what we're working with them is to understand their pricing strategy. So not necessarily the rates they're charging, but is there a percentage uplift in, in certain rates because of the additional um, protocols? Are they extending their hours um, in their finance office or their conference office to be able to support social distancing and for us to be able to pass that back through to you um, agencies. Also looking at deconstruction, so deconstruction of uh, potential day delegate rates and again for us to be able to educate the corporates. No one likes the word supplement and what we're trying to do is to understand that you know, if you had a ballroom of say 100 and now the capacity is over 50, how are you going to charge for that from a venue perspective? Would that be room hire um, and breakdown of teas and coffees and lunch? Are you serving lunch? Are you serving tea and coffee? These are things that we're trying to understand from the venues to be able to share with you, to share with your customers as well. Um, um, with regards to the minimum numbers, you know, are there going to be higher minimum numbers for bigger rooms? What does that look like? Again, it's about managing expectations because the pricing strategy is not going to be the same as we know from pre-COVID. And we want to be able to support that moving forward. Our badge of the industry, um, the infographic that we sent out um, a couple of weeks ago, has had some really great traction and we've now launched that to um, BVEP, BTA, um, AIEA um, and enabling them to actually put their own badges on that, so their own logos. Because this was never about an HVAA infographic, this was about something that showcased to the industry 
what we represent in terms of the amount of jobs, the amount of spend um, coupled with leisure. We want to be able to showcase that to the government that without having our own um, SIC code, we have a badge of identity. We would ask that that infographic is used on all of your collateral wherever you can to be able to identify what you're part of and who you represent and who represents you as well. It's really key for us to be able to keep um, using that and for all press releases moving forward, um, we will be using that infographic as well. As you know, a couple of weeks ago, we spearheaded the launch of um, quality and tourism accreditation. And what's been really evident to us is that without having that baseline, it's very difficult for a corporate to understand what a venue is offering in terms of their cleaning protocols. And all of the venues have worked tirelessly um, to you know, inc increase and improve their cleaning, um, but there's no set standards. So that's why we spearheaded the quality and tourism. And to date, just looking at the figures, there's nearly 2,000 hotels and venues that are either in the process of being accredited or have been accredited now. Um, within that, there are six groups, some international global chains as well, eight, 108 independent properties, and that's still increasing all the time. Obviously, there's been other schemes launched and people and venues have the um, ability to pick who they want to go into um, and who they want to be accredited by, whether they're going for free accreditation. We felt at the time this was the uh, right thing to do to be able to get behind something that provided consistency and standards. One thing that 